Hello and welcome to the second episode of my tutorial series Subtractive Synthesis on Various Synthesizers. In this episode we'll be discussing signal flow and oscillators and moreover how to use oscillators in sound design. So you may notice that the synthesizer here is not one of the synthesizers I illustrated in the previous episode. That's because I decided it was important to illustrate the signal flow within the synthesizer before I jump into designing sounds. And I thought that a modular synthesizer was a good way to do that. So for anybody who doesn't know what a modular synthesizer is, a modular synthesizer is a series of disjoint modules, each of which has its own function they may be connected together in various ways to generate and process signals, typically audio. This configuration of modules is not a configuration that I ordinarily use because my modular synthesizer is not primarily set up for subtractive synth voices. So it's a little bit of a grab bag, but it should allow us to understand and create a basic synthesizer voice. So let's start on the left and I'll tell you what type of module each module is and we can talk about how that corresponds to the typical sections that I described in a subtractive synthesizer. So the first module is an oscillator module. An oscillator module is a module which outputs a signal which oscillates. Now this is just the voltage, but if it were passed to a speaker, it would be a sound. So these are the primary sound source in your subtractive synthesizer. They often have various parameters. An important one is pitch. This allows you to use an external device to set the pitch of that oscillator. So in fact, I'm going to do that now. And in this configuration, I have two oscillators. It's common in subtractive synths to have more than one oscillator. This is not the way to do this um, splitting of the signal. I'm passively splitting the signal, which is actually um, going to adjust the pitch. But in this case, it doesn't particularly matter. This is for illustrative purposes. So what I'm going to do, where am I going to get my pitch from? There is a pitch connector on the back of this key step. So what do we have now? We now have a connection between this keyboard and the pitch inputs of these two oscillators. And what's happening when I play a key, the pitch output is outputting a voltage which is supposed to correspond to a certain note. The way the notes are scaled is called volt per octave, and the meaning of zero volts is set by convention. Beyond oscillators just providing one fixed oscillation, typically they have a way of adjusting their tuning with respect to the voltage that's played in, a way of setting the wave shape that they output, and possibly some other wave shaping parameters. In this case, we have one output for all the different waveforms that can be produced. In the case of this oscillator, we actually have one output per waveform type. So let's start by connecting the outputs of these to the next module. But what is the next module? The next module and the next component in a typical subtractive synthesizer is a mixer. This is a way to mix together the audio generated by multiple distinct oscillators or other sources. So in this case, um, the layout is a little confusing. The top row are four inputs. Those inputs pass through these attenuators. To attenuate a signal is to make its amplitude smaller. Logically, this is making its volume quieter. With the knob set in the middle, that's zero attenuation negative values will actually invert the signal, positive values will leave the signal as is. These outputs into the mixer, which then goes to these outputs. So what I'm going to do is run the main out of this oscillator to the input here, 
I'm going to run the sine wave out for illustration purposes to this input here. So what we have going on is the output of these two oscillators being fed to the input of this mixer. So the output, these three outputs are identical. The outputs of this mixer are the combination of the sounds of the two oscillators controlled by these volume attenuators. So the next element in a typical subtractive synth, and this is what makes it subtractive, is a filter. We call it subtractive because we subtract harmonic content from a sound. So I'm going to run the output of this mixer to one of the inputs on this filter. By far the most common type of filter in a subtractive synthesizer is known as a low-pass filter. What a low-pass filter does is at some certain cutoff frequency any frequencies in your sound above that frequency get attenuated or made quieter. So the lower the cutoff frequency, the more quiet the higher pitched elements of the sound will become. The rate at which this happens with respect to the cutoff frequency is called the slope. So a steeper slope means there is a more aggressive cutting off of higher frequencies above that cutoff. So I'm going to feed the low pass output because this filter outputs all of them, the low pass, bad pass and high pass versions simultaneously. And I'm going to feed it into this module. Now, conventionally, this would be a VCA or voltage controlled amplifier. You can think of that as a way of taking an audio signal and some other signal and using the other signal to shape the audio to make it louder or quieter. So that's the amplification. This module is actually what's called the LPG or low pass gate and I'm using it functionally like an amplifier. So after the amplifier the signal will be output somewhere. In my example I talked about effects so I put an effect module in here. This module is a delay so this will create echo type effects and finally I need this signal to go somewhere so I feed it to the output ports. So now we have an end-to-end -end signal flow. Oscillators into mixer, into filter, into amplifier, into effect, to the output. But you may note that this module hasn't been used. The reason that this module hasn't been used, this is an envelope module. And an envelope does not generate audio. Remember I said the VCA will use a signal shape to control the amplitude of another signal. An envelope is going to generate such a control signal. I want to use this one in ADSR mode. Um, and it's just pick a reasonable shape. So this envelope module now when triggered rather when it receives a gate will generate an envelope, a typical ADSR type of envelope. Relatively straightforward but what do we do with this? Well remember that I said that a VCA takes a control signal to shape audio. So I'm going to send the envelope to the control input of the VCA, which isn't a VCA. Okay, now how is this envelope going to know when to trigger? Well, in the same way as we connected the pitch output of this keyboard to these oscillators, I'm going to connect another output on this keyboard known as a gate output to the input of the envelope. So what exactly does this do for us? Well, what it does for us is when a key is pressed, that signal is going to be transmitted, that gate signal. As long as the key is held, the gate will remain open. As soon as I release the key, the gate will close. So if I press a key, we can see this lights up and I release, it goes out. Okay, so now we have a signal flow running through. 
but you might be wondering, well, where's the sound? And the reason is there no sound, there is no sound, is twofold. One reason there is no sound is because the level of this mixer that I describe is not turned up. So in other words, no volume is coming through. So I'm going to just turn up this knob, which will increase the amount of volume that is transmitted from this oscillator into the mixer, into the filter, into the VCA, into the effect. So if I press a button, you may note that nothing particularly interesting is happening at this point. Why? Remember I described the filter to you. Well, the filter cutoff control is all the way down. What this means is that the filter cutoff is a low frequency. So any pitches above that very low frequency are being attenuated, in other words, made quieter. So. So we can hear that now we're getting some sound out of this, but the pitch of that sound is very low. Because this cable is not working correctly. Let's try turning it around. Okay, that's better. So now I've turned this cable around and it's working. It should have worked either way. It must be broken. I'll have to look at that. So now we have what I would describe as expected behavior for a synthesizer. When we press a key, the pitch of the oscillator is set. I'm only listening to one oscillator because what I've tried to do here is set up what you might call an init patch. An init patch on a synthesizer means an initial configuration which represents the most basic signal flow and sound that you can achieve. So, my init patch has one oscillator, the other oscillator is turned down in the mixer, feeding into my filter, which is completely open. The envelope is basically a, a gate shape, it's a very simple shape. The VCA is using this to gate the audio, which then goes into my effect, and my effect mix is turned all the way down. So this is the most basic configuration I could conceive of. So what can we do effectively with only an oscillator? The rest of this signal flow isn't really doing anything significant other than gating the signal. An init patch on pretty much any synth would be like this. So let's experiment and let's see what we can do from a timbrel perspective. What I think is going to be the most interesting here is just to listen to the timbres, listen to the tones that we can achieve and figure out what we could do. So, quite an interesting shape already that we have there. We've got something a little bit buzzy. Let's experiment with this shape parameter. So, even though we haven't had to in theory, with our init patch, touch the mixer, touch the other oscillator, we haven't had to touch the filter, we haven't had to adjust the envelopes, we haven't turned on the effects. It's still possible for us to play something that sounds like music. We can be expressive in what we do. So let's think about the sounds that we can get here. Let's listen to them a little. Okay, so thinking about what that sounds like, I think it has a, a rounded tone. It has a tone which is quite 
strong and forward and quite full. Let's move up the... And you can hear that as we adjust this, we're getting a sort of thinner, more buzzy tone coming out. So let's experiment. So you could imagine, if you're familiar with this waveform, it's a pulse wave. So when I'm moving that, we get a sound reminiscent of the famous pulse width modulation. The next waveform type is something like a saw wave. Um, I believe it's a super saw. So the super saw, I think, sounds more buzzy. It has a bit more harmonic content which for a subtractive synthesizer when we bring the other components of the synth into play will be useful. Let's move on. This one doesn't have a shape parameter, that's what the dot means. So that is a saw wave. A saw, again, very buzzy. The super saw can be thought of as two saw waves interacting with one another and a parameter to adjust that interaction. Next wave. So this is a triangle wave. A triangle wave is closer to a sine wave. The sine wave has effectively no harmonic content. So the triangle wave has a strong fundamental, much weaker, higher harmonics. And we can hear it has very little buzz compared to those other waveforms, and it sounds quite clean. The next one is this, uh, I guess, shark tooth wave. So listening to that tone, it sounds to me similar to a saw wave, that buzzy wave that we heard, but when we modulate it, we get that thinning effect that we got on the pulse wave. So it sounds to me similar to pulse width modulation if I do this. Okay, so we can hear those waveforms. Next waveform is what? I don't know. So this sounds like a cleaner waveform, but it has that same pulse width modulation sound to me as we move it. So I think this is something like a sine wave, but with some shaping applied to it that breaks the waveform, giving us that buzz of the sharp edge like a saw. Finally, this is the cleanest of all of the waves. You can hear there's very little buzz. There's a very strong fundamental, which is uh, the pitch that I'm playing. So if you compare this to the triangle wave, So you can hear that the triangle is quite clean, but it has more harmonics and more buzz. So if I'm only working with the oscillator and not worrying about any of the rest of the signal flow, hopefully you can see there's quite a range of timbres available to me. And this is only using a single oscillator. So next episode, we're going to come back and we're not going to use one oscillator. We're going to introduce a second oscillator and explore the tombral possibilities that it opens to us. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the series so far, and I hope you come back for some more videos. Thank you and goodbye.